Soon after the footage went viral, the human colostomy bag that we call Tommy Robertson waded into the situation and made some allegations about Jamal that, well, we think are defamatory. Or a lot of people think are defamatory. To that end, lawyers working on behalf of Jamal are taking action against Tommy Robinson. Not only are they seeking to prove what Tommy Robinson said is defamatory, but they're also looking at how his sources of funding and social media companies such as Facebook are sort of allowing this abuse to continue, because Jamal is not the only victim. To that end, Jamal's lawyers have set up what is known as a crowd justice, which is basically like a GoFundMe, but for legal cases. And it's been used to great effect in several cases here in the UK. They've set themselves a target of £10,000 over 30 days. Today is day one, and they're already at 1120 but what we really want to do is exceed that limit and come up with, you know, quite a bunch of money that can sort of really use to knuckle down on some of these bastards. The level of collusion that's going on here is insane. Now, when I was out of the country, a jihadi lawyer decided to hand documentation, which gave an address stated as where I live, where my wife and children are, he handed that over to a group of extremist left-wing activists. Now, try and make this out for yourself. My wife and children and my family have been told multiple times that their lives are in danger from Antifa, who are going to come to their house. They then receive a phone call to say Antifa Far-left groups backed by Mike Stutchbury, who regularly tweets in support of Antifa, and Resisting Hate, who again work with an organisation called Tell Mama. Tell Mama share an office with, guess who? The Muslim lawyer. So a radical called Brother Nero, real name Richard Harris, Dick Coughlin, whatever name he wants to give himself. He is handed private and personal documentation, legal documentation, supposedly for me, with an address and na names and addresses on it for my children, by a lawyer. And he's then sent in a gang of six uh, with a pit bull dog or a Staffordshire bull terrier to hand deliver this letter to a home that they know I'm not at, where my wife and children are. What do you think for one minute the reaction would have been by my wife, whilst my children are outside on their bikes and they get information that Antifa are live streaming and on their way to their house. Now the police were called, not by me because I wasn't even in the country, I was on an aeroplane, by my wife because she was scared, as were my young children. What do you think their reaction was when they find out that men are on their way with cameras to live stream their images their photos, who they are, where they live, whilst living under a constant death threat. And they're sent by a lawyer and a group calling themselves resisting hate. That is going against all legal professions. Any lawyer to hand over privileged information of addresses to hate groups, to instigate intimidation, to dox an address. It's not, we're not just talking about Someone might want to smash my windows. We're talking about planned terrorist attacks to murder and kill me. We're talking about eight now government warnings that our lives are in danger. Your hypocrisy is unbelievable. The way that, I, that my family have been allowed to be targeted. Not just targeted, but harassed in their home. And you all act like I'm the wrong one. The MPs all commenting that I'm the wrong one. Every journalist falling them over to every day. Talk about the disgusting tactics of Tommy Robinson. What, because I knocked on the man's house that sent a gang to my yard with my children in it when I wasn't even in the country? It's unbelievable. And I'm glad the public can see it, but this will be deleted soon. The whole point in erasing me from everywhere so I can't even challenge and say what they're doing as they plan to drag me through court case after court case with bullshit after bullshit to try and financially destroy me. Because that ain't enough that I already have to live under death threat because of all the jihadis you keep allowing to come into our country. And because I dare to criticise the backward paedophilic ideology they follow. That's not enough, is it? You want to target my wife and my children. 
Do you understand at all the sort of psychological problems that will last a child with having to hide in their home while groups of men are outside attempting to live stream video footage of them to the public, telling them where they live? Yet none of you have reported on it. None of you have you reported on it. Not one journalist is reporting on the wrongdoings of what happened this weekend at my children's expense. Oh, yeah, but they just handed a letter over to the police. Yeah, because my family rang the police. Because if the police weren't there, a mob of men would have been at their front door harassing them and videoing them. So to that mob of men, to Mike Stutchbury, to the Guardian journalist, to the Daily Mail journalist, to every other one in you, including that Muslim lawyer, that played a part in the intimidation and scaring. Do you know as a father? Do you know as a man? You'd call me a thug. Do you see if I was a thug, I'd go kick down Mike Stutchbury's door and beat him to a pulp if I was the thug you say I am. That's what I'd have done if I was a thug. Because you caused upset and misery to my children. And do you know how angry that makes me as a dad? To think that you're not playing the man. You're going for the weakest and vulnerable spots on purpose. Am I the reason you get stoned every week now? Built up integrity, got you texting, emailing me, wanting me to feel with you. Baby, just face reality, move on. Sometimes it's hard to face reality.